Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Today, congressional Republicans finally passed their overhaul of the U.S. tax code and they sent it over to the White House for the president to sign. It's a major moment, but the legislative year here in Washington is not yet over. With taxes out of the way, Congress must now return to that enormous elephant that has been soiling the carpet of the congressional living room for months now. We're referring, needless to say, to DACA. It's been three months since President Trump announced the end of that Obama-era program, the one that gives job permits to illegal immigrants who came here as minors. Permits under that program will start to expire this spring in early March. Democrats have said they will use the year-end spending bill to shut down the federal government if more than 700,000 people here illegally under DACA don't get amnesty. Now, a single paragraph from a Politico piece yesterday on the negotiations tells you everything you need to know about how Democrats are looking at immigration policy now. Quote, Congressional Republicans in the White House have long said that any DACA deal would need to be paired with security and other enforcement measures. Democrats say that's fine as long as the provisions weren't too onerous, end quote. In other words, Democrats are fine with border enforcement just as long as it doesn't work. That's why they're against the wall. The administration has already moved on the central point of the debate. They say DACA recipients can stay here legally, but in return, their family members must be explicitly barred from benefiting from chain migration. If those relatives want to come to this country, they've got to get in line with everybody else trying to come to this country. Employers, meanwhile, ought to be required to use E-Verify so that they can prove all their employees are here legally. Cities must cooperate in helping to enforce American immigration law. These are not crazy demands. It's not extreme to say that an amnesty should be limited to dreamers and not their extended families in other countries. It's not extreme to say that employers ought to follow existing federal statutes or that big city mayors should stop pretending they run their own countries. These are basic ideas. They treat existing American immigration law as real, something that should be enforced. They assume that not every single person on earth has the moral right to enter this country for any reason and go on public assistance. By the way, the public agrees with those ideas strongly if you believe the polls on the subject. Democrats don't believe in them. Any measure that makes it harder for immigrants to come here illegally and stay forever at public expense is racist and immoral. They've said that repeatedly. Why do they think that? Is there some good reason to think that? Is there any economist on the planet who believes the key to thriving in a high-tech economy is importing millions of poor people with fifth-grade educations who don't speak English? Is that good for your country? Of course not. But Democrats don't see immigration as a way to improve the United States, but instead as a way to transform the country to their political advantage. There's no precedent for this attitude in American politics. It's never happened. Traditionally, politicians try to win votes by improving the lives of voters. It's pretty simple. It's been going on a long time. Herbert Hoover, a chicken in every pot, a car in every garage. That was his promise during the 1928 campaign. He won. Because voters appreciate it. They always do appreciate it if they think you're trying to help them. Bill Clinton got elected twice because he campaigned on actual, tangible concerns of actual people, middle class people. That all seems like ancient history now. Democrats don't do that anymore. Modern Democrats understand that changing the minds of voters is hard, especially when you despise them and attack them for the sin of, I don't know, being white or male or privileged or heteronormative or whatever. They don't like you if you don't like them. So you don't bother changing their minds, you change the voters themselves. Look at Virginia, it just happened there. The state's elected representatives decided long ago they didn't want the state's laws made by those who break them, so they deprived convicted felons of the right to vote. Terry McAuliffe knew it would benefit his party if felons could vote again, so he unilaterally restored those rights and attacked anyone who disagreed as a bigot. Remember that? Well, currently, control of Virginia's House of Delegates hinges on a single race where the candidates literally tied with more than 23,000 votes cast. In other words, McAuliffe's gambit worked. So why not try it on a national scale with a group far larger than just convicted felons? Democrats know if they keep up the flood of illegals into the country, they can eventually turn it into a flood of voters for them. They don't have to foster economic growth or be capable administrators or provide good government. They just have to keep the pump flowing and power will be theirs. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's happening in public. You can watch it happen. So when Democrats howl about shutting down the government because they want total surrender on DACA, remember, this is the reason why. Their political success does not depend on good policies. 
but on demographic replacement. And they'll do anything to make sure it happens. And one more thing, by the way, in the interest of nonpartisan fairness and honesty, which we believe in, it's not just Democrats who believe in protecting illegal immigrants at all costs. Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona, he's retiring, but he's still a Republican. He agreed to support the GOP tax plan in return for the promise of an amnesty deal. You thought the tax plan was about cutting your taxes or making our economy stronger, doing something for this country. But for Jeff Flake, and likely for other Republicans on Capitol Hill, hate to say it, but it's true, the real priority was making sure that not a single illegal was ever deported, because that's what they really care about. Congressman John Garamendi is a Democrat. He represents the state of California and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Good to be with you. So the, the priority here, I think, is really revealing. All the things going on in this country, a lot of them bad, and Democrats in the Congress have said, the one thing we won't put up with is not giving amnesty to 700,000 people here illegally. Why is that number one on the list of concerns? It's, it may or may not be number one. It is among the list. It is one of the number, one of the issues on the list. There are others. There are the health care issues that are out there, the 9 million children in the Children's Health Insurance Program. Want to get that funded without cutting other essential health programs, which is the current proposal that's being put forward. So there are a series of issues. There's the health care issue. There is certainly the issue. Uh, DACA is one of them. Uh, actually, we kind of stand with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce on this one. Oh, I bet. Uh, they want us to solve taking this. money from the same people. But I just wonder, well, like, we why? Do? Yeah, well, sure. I mean, this is a concern of big business, of donors. They want cheap labor. But I Well, it's more than that. Is it's... there any economist you've ever met who says the key to prosperity is importing a lot of poor people with low le levels of education. That's quite different than the DACA issue. The DACA issue are young men and women, usually that came here uh, as children uh -huh. uh, with their parents, many young children, five years even younger than that. Uh, so they grew up here. They are really American in every way, except they don't have the papers. Well, but their education levels are considerably lower than that of, mm, of America. Well, well, they are. Actually, I have the numbers uh, right here. 22% have a bachelor's degree. That's compared to 32%, 10 points below uh, native-born Americans. Relatively few of even high school degrees, even though the majority are adults. And many are in the military. There, there, there are some in the military. But my question is, as a broader question of policy, we're in a high-tech economy. Everyone knows that skills and education are key. Why are we letting in a million low-wage, low-skill workers every year? Well, there's even a better question than that. Why did we spend one trillion five hundred billion dollars and not a nickel on education, not a nickel on job training? We just did that today. Uh huh. And in, you know, we set priorities today. We said the priority is to transfer a huge amount of money to corporations and to the, and to the super wealthy, the top 1%, 83% of all that money yeah. went there, and not a nickel for education, not for the job training then that I, just Then described. I wonder why you're not holding up the government over that or the fact that carried interest loophole is still in the tax code, which helps, you know, big Democratic donors, the hedge funds, the private equity guys, but you're not shutting down the government over that. You're we shutting should. it down over... Okay, but instead... It's to give citizenship or legal status well, to people there are, who are there illegally. A multi I'm, I'm beginning yeah. to think maybe the motive is getting new voters, honestly. Well, I don't think it's going to make a difference on the voting scale. But what does make a difference is that there are 800,000 young men and women that were literally raised in the United States that are going to be deported very shortly. This is an important workforce. 22 percent of, what, 800,000? We're talking about, what, want to do the math? It's, We're talking it's a about, lot of people. I just wonder if, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't think there's any person who says the U.S. economy is crying out for more low-skilled labor. It's just, it's just not. It's a high-tech. You're from California. I don't need to tell well, you Why that. don't we talk about the agricultural right. labor program no. where there is a need okay. for low-skilled workers. But the future is not more people with fifth-grade educations. It's the, not. It's more the, engineers. The, the, These are not engineers. The DACA question. Well, we're looking at somewhere north of 70,000 if it's 22 percent that have that graduate degree. Okay, but it's still lower than the national average. Yeah. But here, I, I guess, here's my question. The DACA question is unique because yep. they didn't have consent when they came here. They came here as kids. Yep. But why should we allow their relatives in foreign countries to come here? It's a reasonable question. By chain migration. Why not just say, if you have a relative, you got to come the way everyone else comes when they want to emigrate to the United States. Well, the chain migration question is a legitimate question. And it, it needs to be answered. And difficult. it needs to be answered in the context of a comprehensive immigration reform. But how about which in this? Is no, but hold on. The debate is now over DACA. And it's going to yeah. happen, like, imminently, right now. Yeah. And so why not just say, look, we're, we're going to give up on chain migration, e-verify, you 
you should have to follow the federal law on immigration. Well, you're talking to a fellow that's been the number one advocate of E-Verify. Well, amen, that I'm so glad. Why don't you convince your fellow Democrats that E-Verify, end of chain migration, real border control, end of sanctuary city nonsense, these aren't crazy ideas. The public supports these ideas. Well, there are many things that we can do on immigration policy, and, and those are some of them. Certainly the E-Verify is extremely important. It ought to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other things that need to go along with that. And I'll give you an example. California is the largest agricultural producing state in the nation, yeah. depending heavily upon immigrant labor force. That labor force is literally not available today, but if you had ag, the ag labor program, if you had a comprehensive review, E-Verify, comprehensive uh, border control along the way, and by the way, as ranking member of the Coast Guard Maritime, you really want to spend some money wisely? Put it into the Coast Guard. That's where most of the contraband is coming but in. Why don't, and an increasing here's, amount here's of the, look, illegal. Nobody trusts Congress on border enforcement because they've lied to us for generations about it. We're enforcing the border. No, you're not, actually. That's why we have these problems to begin with. So why not just cool the temperature, reassure everyone that only the DACA people are getting amnesty by just saying we're not going to allow their relatives that. to come through chain migration? I'm not going to debate that with you. So you'd That's be for okay. that? Chain migration is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Who's Does against it, you, that, though, I wonder? I mean, why would everyone be for that? Well, I suppose somebody that is here that would like to have their mother or their father yeah. come in. Yeah, but they're not voters, so they don't get a say. They could be. Yeah, well, I guess that's they the could point. Be. <laughs> to make the voters. That's no, no. my whole point. Well, they may already be citizens. <laughs> right. And I can give you a couple of examples of people that, that have become citizens. Right. And they'd like to have their family come. Of course. Nothing and and they can that. come. They can get in line with everybody else. Congressman, thank you. Good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you.